Hi, Mia. Can, can, is this on? Is, I think is this actually working? Can you hear me? Oh, all right. It works. Okay. I forgot. <laughs> now I have a question for you, Chip. All right. Where's Dennis? <laughs> okay. I don't know how many of you have actually taken a look at bread and wine, um, but just to sort of uh, for background for Mia's question, which was, where is Dennis? Uh, Dennis is at home. Uh, he's a very private person. Um, and bread and wine is basically the story of how um, 25 years ago, 24 years ago, uh, Dennis and I first got together. It's, it's a slightly unusual story. Um, First of all, Dennis had been homeless for six years when we met, uh, and he was selling um, books from a blanket on 72nd Street, uh, and then uh, with a sort of with a, with a supermarket trolley, he would then take his all of his belongings across Central Park uh, and sleep in the doorway of an art dealer on Madison Avenue, uh, and uh, that's because uh, one of the pieces of uh, um, wisdom for homeless people is that you don't sleep where you work and you don't work where you sleep uh, because um, uh, it's a way of avoiding police harassment. Uh, if, you're complete, if you're completely associated 24 hours a day with one neighborhood, uh, it's, it's harder to avoid um, encounters with, uh, um, um, you know, with the, the, the powers that be. Uh, Dennis was a, was, a, was, a, was a font of information of this sort. Uh, and uh, um, he was very, when um, we were putting together the book, Dennis did a lot of the, um, he could actually be called a co-author of the book, really. It, it's yeah. no, yeah, it's, it, it's no real exaggeration. Well, you remember when I asked, when I knew I was going to be drawing this, and I, I said to Dennis, like, well, what was your life like? And the three of us traipsed around Manhattan, and he would say, this is where I washed, this is where I slept, this is where we... we you know, followed his path all over Manhattan. So I could see, and I took pictures, so I'd have references for the book. Yeah, and, you know. and, and all of that informs me as quite wonderful and ex extraordinary drawings. Um, uh, and you, um, the book is really, a, you, as you will see, if you, um, when, if any of you um, uh, take a look at it, I hope you will, uh, it's, it's much more about Dennis than it is about me. I just sort of fill in the holes. Uh, 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 you do a little more than that. Well, <laughs> yes. <laughs> you did write it after all, you know. <laughs> I, I can't let it was going to no, Dennis fills in the holes. I uh, uh, just uh, uh, provide them. <laughs> okay, we're already going south. Okay, yes, all right. keep we're going. Going. <laughs> going a little south. Going a little south. <laughs> yeah. Um, okay. Um, so that's. Um, um, but but I, I have another question. Sure. Which I was when I found out ever so recently that we were going to do this, and I was thinking about it, and I was remembering. Well, I wasn't there, but because I drew it, I sort of think I was there, mm -hmm. and I was at the actual spot. But when you found him selling books on the sidewalk, and you didn't have the money to pay the book, and that's why you had to come back, and I thought, would he have come back if he had paid for the book? That's another interesting uh, question, again, <laughs> that, that will make more sense when you actually read it, the, the way the, the story starts uh, in the first couple of pages. Um, I wanted to buy a copy of a book, Norman Potteritz is making it, I don't know why. Uh, however, um, I didn't, um, it turned out I didn't have my wallet with me, uh, and he was selling it for two bucks, I believe. And so I um, said, well, I'll, you know, um, and he said, take it anyway, and you, know, you can bring me the money when you get a chance. This is, this is not something that basically uh, New York vendors of any sort tend to do. Um, and uh, so I was actually rather impressed at his generosity, and so I was back the next day uh, with the two dollars, and, and he said, "Wow, you actually brought it back! I didn't think you would." Um, and um, so that was the beginning of our relationship, our friendship. Uh, but as you 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 ask, would I have come back even if I had had the two dollars? In a minute, 
<laughs> uh, yeah, it was, it was very much, um, I was very much struck with him. Uh, and um, from one thing led to another. Um, and, uh, you know, and we've been together for the next, for the last 25 years. Um, and still are quite happily. Um, so um, there is something to be said for, uh, I think it's called love at first sight, you know, um, which could actually be talked about in other terms, too, I think, you know, because uh, I don't know why we don't occasionally. What do you mean, other terms? I think it, it, it's called lust at first sight, is what I'm really talking about, uh, because that's very much what it was in my case. Uh, I just thought, this is an amazing looking person, and then when I started to talk to him, he just seemed more and more astonishing. Um, every, you know, interchange we had and I have um, you know and I never looked back and here we are you know as I said or that is to say um, as I said he is a very private person and I I am a bit of a ham I like to talk in public and and you know and things like that and I uh, and I, I I have been ever since I was a kid I've been accused of promiscuous auto boot autobiographizing, uh, and so I tend to do that, um, but he doesn't, uh, and so, and I respect that very much, and so, um, you know, so, uh, he, you know, he likes, um, you know, every once in a while, it's, uh, you know, uh, somebody will mention his name in an article, and he's always kind of pleased with that, you know, he's, he's had his name mentioned in the New York Times, and um, he finds that kind of, you know, fun and kicky, uh, but he doesn't, Run to you know um, to to uh, to to be on a panel or to uh, um, you know to appear in public um, when he finds himself gets a little tongue-tied when put on the spot as a lot of people do you know I do too sometimes I just don't care. <laughs> Dennis is bad with me. Have you noticed? Pardon me. Dennis is only a ham with me. He's only, yeah, he's, he's got a great sense of humor. He's <laughs> lots of fun. And he's very social. This doesn't mean that he's antisocial at all. He likes parties and, you know, and he likes, uh, you know, he likes, he, he likes people. He, he liked it when we were doing the book, though. Uh, yeah, he was very he, into it, remember? Right, yes, yes. Especially yes. when I came over with the camera. Yes, uh -huh, yes, yes, he, he is. I mean, I don't, when I say that, I don't mean that he's not uh, um, um, a gregarious guy. He does like to talk and what have you um, and uh, but he's as I said it's just he doesn't like he's not he's not a, he's not a fundamentally public person and I guess possibly because I I started um, as a writer and started publishing so early so that by the time I was 21 I'd already had you know a handful of novels published um, that uh, I, I guess I got used to um, you know uh, Appearing in public, it's very funny. My daughter, I have a, 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 a now shortly to be 40 year old daughter who is a, um, a doctor, and I, I uh, <clears throat> and I, I, I once asked her, um, both I'm gay, as you, as you all probably all know, and as indeed, and, and her mother is also uh, gay, and um, um, at one point. Um, only a, about a year ago, I said, Iva, you know, what would you say was the most um, characteristic thing or the most important thing to tell people about being the child of, of gay parents? Iva is as straight as they come and is happily married and all sorts of things like that. And she said, well, Dad, she says, um, the most characteristic experience of being the child of a gay, gay parents is that practically every three months since I've been 10 years old, I had to sit on a panel of children of gay parents and talk about it to some, you know, to some public group, either down at the firehouse at the gay center on 14th Street and what have you. And it's true, she hit that's probably um, the single experience, short of going to classes, um, that she has done more than anything else in her life, you know, and uh, I guess that's, you know, um, so you do get used to a certain kind of uh, publicity, I guess, for better or for worse. I don't know whether it's good for the soul or not, um, but it does happen. The book? The book, ha ha. What do you think mostly, what, what is the thing that you think is, for you, was the most interesting thing about doing the book as an artist, Mia? Well, considering I'd never drawn a graphic novel before, and 
when well I remember me suggesting it and you remember you suggesting it so I don't know who even suggested it no I think you, I think I you, you think it was you no was I think me? it was you I thought it was you I thought I thought you suggested it I can't even remember but then I remember you sent me a bunch of basically letters right. and then and then you sent me something that was slightly more organized but basically there was no, it wasn't like a script like the Alan Moore writes or something sure. where every detail is like, and then there's a little thread on the dresser and, you know. So it was kind of like I just got to invent comic books all over. Right. You know, or serial narrative. And it was, because it was an urban setting, mm -hmm. and I don't usually render that kind of thing, I had to actually draw buildings and toilets and beds and you know, lobbies of weird motels with strange crystals hanging from the ceiling. So, so <laughs> it became a like a technical challenge, but also yeah. a narrative challenge. And also, it was really nice that you didn't. You kind of let me do whatever the hell I wanted. So, yeah, sure. So, uh, so I would draw one way on one page and another on. You know, as it's you know, like when it would get really loose, or I would there would be flashbacks, or suddenly there's this, you know, the, when they're dancing in the rain and. Mm -hmm. So, it was like I was inventing it as I went along and I was using everything I knew how to do and then I had to invent stuff that I didn't know how to do. Mm -hmm. And I would get kind of comic booky, and then I would get kind of like straight. Yeah. And at the same time it was like, so all of that's being woven around the story and then hanging out with you and Dennis, like walking through Manhattan and then taking pictures of you guys. And so it was like, it had, all these different levels. It wasn't just technical, it was also because I know you and I've known you for a while, it was like yeah, for this quite a while, yes. thing. <laughs> yeah. So it was interesting to have somebody like Dennis, who I, I kind of knew the outline of his story, but I didn't know the details. Right. To go and see this little alcove where he used to sleep with all that fancy tile work because it was on the Upper East Side and had, it was one of these doorways with the sidewalk had this beautiful um, black and white, I guess it was tile, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And it with little um, brass inlays and that's where he slept. And then to find out the whole story about his family, which is kind of heartbreaking and awful. Yeah. And then to have to figure out how to draw it, you know, and, and then, <laughs> yeah. you know, because it was all in my head and it was just his story. And then there was these act, and then I had all these photos of you guys taking your clothes off. And then I had the best one of which was you with your underpants stuck in your foot. <laughs> <laughs> That's one of my favorites. Well, <laughs> you want to, you want to get the, like the gestures down. Yeah. Cause you know, you know, the drawing with Dennis is doing this and he's sort of looking up, which is very much Dennis. Yes. That sort of shy part of him. Yeah. And maybe he doesn't seem shy, Chip, but he had, you were so cute with your underpants stuck in your foot that it was like, there's something about when people undress and they get very vulnerable, and especially if it's the first time you're going to go to bed with somebody, so it was like, so I got to do that too. Yeah. I mean, I was just would make it up as I went along, but I thought I have to have pictures of them undressing, yeah. which turned out to be a good idea. Yeah, well, you, and you did a very good well, job. Well, I had that statuesque one of Dennis, like shot from under, I got down on the floor and he has his like, very well. He, it was washed at this point, but the jumpsuit. How long had he had on the jumpsuit? Um, about th at least three or four years. And it had never been washed. No. So, so, but this is what he lived in. So I, I thought, well, this is emblematic of his outfit, and he had this, you know, he had this long braid. So, I went over to their apartment with a camera, and I, and I said undress but slowly so I can document it so I can get because the movements of like when you like the one of you pulling your t-shirt off mm -hmm. this is very hard to imagine in your head because you get all strangled up in the sleeve and so I got I got down on the floor and I got so I could get this like almost like Rodin-esque image of Dennis and he's undoing his like you know his jumpsuit and I, I made his braid come down so it got bigger you know I like accented the perspective yeah so that like that stuff just happened as you know we were going along, right? Yeah. And so it was like building the bits with you guys, with the art, with the stories, like layering, and then you would throw in some little extra thing, and and the story about one of my favorites was when Dennis was like nervous that maybe you were a murderer. Oh right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he went to a friend and said. Well, if you haven't read the book, you'll find this out. But he he didn't really know Chip, so he asked a friend who was a cop like. 
you know, I met this guy, and the guy, you know, and the guy knew him, and he said, well, I think he's, but Dennis is saying he could be a murderer, and he's going to cut me up in pieces and bury me in plastic bags, so I thought, oh, great, I get to draw this, <laughs> you know, Chip, like, digging and with plastic bags and the, you know, the Brooklyn Bridge, and so I, and of course, then there's the bicycle. Yes, yes, yes. Which is, at one point, Dennis, who's, he never, did he ever have a bicycle ever in his life before yeah. that? Oh, before then? I think he, yeah, I think he did. Because no, he, he knew how, how to, to ride one, No, right? he knew how to, oh, he definitely knew how okay. to ride And he certainly rode his bicycle all over Amherst. Yeah. Yeah, so that, that's very, that was very... But he gets a bicycle once they move in, to, and this is like a symbol of freedom, so I thought, well, I should just go berserk. It's, the whole thing about making art is you can do whatever the hell you want. I mean, nobody can, st well, I guess if they're paying you up front, they can stop you, but... You can do anything. So I thought, well, the bicycle should fly. So I put wings on it and had him flying over Amherst and sort of going, wee! And it was, it was nice that you didn't really tell me what to do. So we got to have all these extensions of the story right. and I got to like sort of just use everything I knew. Yeah, well, there, there was a kind of pre-story, um, I think, to it, the, to the whole thing that I think is, was fascinating. Uh, Mia used to, um, at one point, um, annually or or maybe three times every two years, would would sort of do a small edition of her of her store of her um, uh, drawings and and paintings. I feed. Uh, I yes, called I feed, and it was something that she would publish every year, and it was a a lovely piece. And in the, and one I feed, um, we had a friend, a, a wonder, wonderful wonderful friend, named Robert Morales, um, who indeed uh, died of few months ago, um, and um, which was, uh, that's a whole other story. Uh, but at any that's rate... That's how we met. Huh? The three yeah. of us all met simultaneously. All met at the same afternoon, actually, when I... Dahlgren, it's all because of Dahlgren. Yeah, yeah right, yeah, <laughs> years, years and years ago at a, at, a, at a reading, not unlike this, actually. But anyway, um, uh, uh, Robert had taken care of his uh, younger sister uh, during her last years with breast cancer uh, when he, he lived her at, at home with uh, Arlene. And you had done, uh, he then had a dream, I believe. Well, what it was is, well, no, it wasn't a dream. Oh, what? Well, there was two little stories I did about Robert. One was a dream, of course, they're both about death. One was a dream where he was in his coffin and somebody came in to the, the viewing room and there was a quarter underneath him and the man, I, I drew it as though they were both him, but I think the actual dream was that the man reached down and his hand went right through Robert's body to pick up the quarter and then withdrew. And that was one of them. But the other one which had Arlene in it was, he told me was a true story. And I say, this is the before the story with Chip and Dennis, this is the only like sort of narrative strip I ever drew. He uh, called it the angel of death and he said he was in bed and um, something came into his room and sort of like picked up the sheets on his bed and then the hands came and you know like if someone presses on your eyeballs you see like sort of whirls and stars. He said something pressed on his, eyebrow, his eye eyeballs and this is what happened and he tried to move and he said he literally couldn't move. It was like ectoplasm was holding him in place. And he, you know, and then he broke free and he got up and he went outside and Arlene, his sister, who at that point was still alive, was making tea in the kitchen. And he said, were you in my room? And she said, no. So he, he told me this was a true story. Uh -huh. Oh, I see. Yeah. So that's how I right, so learned you, how to draw. Right, so the, the, this, this, became, this was Mia's first um, panel art. Yeah. Experiment uh, that, that combined these two stories, and I thought it was it was wonderful, very very effective, um, and um, and then I think that's when I rem as I remember it, you said, oh, I really like doing that, and everybody is, says how much they like the like it. I'd like to do something with you, and that's and, that's and here I was thinking you were going to send me a science fiction story. <laughs> 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 and suddenly all these letters arrive and I was like, wait, wait, oh, build, oh, buildings, people. Yeah. But then it was like, hey, what the yes, hell? And next, it was you know, good. Voila, graphic novel. Uh, or That's graphic novella, uh, at any rate. Yeah, I'm, I'm very glad it worked out that way. I, I had a great time doing it. I think Dennis had a great time doing it. Um, it's, um, um, 
the um, there were there were a couple of incidents, you know, that, that I say incidents that makes uh, um, moments or I guess anecdotes again from the whole process. As you, um, at one point, Mia came to the house uh, with her camera when she, she and she was, and she said, "Okay, take your clothes off." Now, um, I'd had a fair amount of experience with theater back in the 60s and 70s where I had to run around the stage naked. So it was all, you know, okay, you know. So here we are again. Uh, but Dennis had not. Uh, and so, but he got into it. He got very, very he, much. He liked it. Yeah, he, re he, was, very, he, was, uh, he was really. He was a woman taking pictures of him and he's getting naked. He seemed very happy. Yes, yeah, he was extremely happy. And you happy. were there getting naked, so it was all good. Yes, and, went, yeah, and it worked out very, very well. But he did, feel, I know, it was interesting because it was clear that, he, that for the first 32 seconds, he felt a little odd, you know, the, and, and I don't think he knew the request was coming. Um, you didn't warn him? Um, I might have, but he probably wasn't paying, you oh, know, oh, Mia's going to come up and take some pictures and she may have to take some nude ones. You know, that was like that. Well, I thought he knew. <laughs> <laughs> so he didn't know as much, he didn't know as clearly as he might. That's probably the best way to, but he got very much into it and they were, and they're great pictures and, and the pictures in the book, I think, are some of the most effective. The underpant one and the t-shirt one and, and, oh, and well, then there's the shoes with the socks, but that didn't involve any nudity. But yeah, that was, that's, a, that, that's the one that everybody remembers, is the, <laughs> the, um, the socks. I will say nothing about the socks if you haven't read it. Hey, actually, anatomically, the hardest one I did, don't laugh, were the blowjobs, because I was up in my studio and I'm thinking, I have all these reference books, and I'm thinking, surely I have one picture of this. So I went through all my books and I could not find one. I mean, I, there was there was some sex things, but there was no oral sex ones. So I thought, oh no, because you know the anatomy like switches. The faces are very strange, and you, you know, like, and also kissing is like a hard thing to draw. Mm -hmm. And I didn't have a picture of you guys kissing or yeah. the other. So, yeah. so I used a mirror, and I, I got them. <laughs> I literally picked the mirror and like open and like made this angle of the throat and the mouth, so I could see exactly what it looked like. So you see all these things I learned because of you. Yeah, well, you you, 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 you did a very, very good job. I would not have known if you well, did. Well, you know, yeah. artists have these issues. Right. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know. mm -hmm. um, are there any um, Are there any questions from anybody in the audience? Um, um, this is because this is a. Um, you know, because it's a graphic novel, we've decided that readings are not the best thing to do with graphic novels. And you know, you, um, there was a guy years and years ago who used to read the um, comic books on the radio, Pop the Comic Weekly. Uh, but I, probably since I am almost certainly the oldest person in the house, um, I don't think. Um, and they were. This was when I was six, seven, eight years old. I doubt whether anybody else remembers Pop the Comic Weekly. Uh, and um, so um, we'll, we, we'll pass up the, the readings per se. Uh, but we will answer But does questions. anybody have any questions about who either who has read it? Yes, Rick. I'm curious. If he was sending you letters, did you draw it immediately? Or did you wait until you accumulated everything? Did you sit down and do it in one shot? Oh, they were, it, it was a bunch of letters all in one envelope that I had written to yeah, a couple of other I people actually, I, that, I, told the that told the story of our getting together. I actually did sketches and in the new edition the sketches are in the afterwards. I, I sketched everything and I you, you can even see from some of the sketches in the back that I did a couple versions of things and I moved things around but I went once I did those really fast and once I had those I pretty much went straight to you know the the finished pencils and the ink. So I don't think there was too much talking or just, yeah. mm -hmm. although I did have to at one point actually take some words out because he, he didn't, in one tiny panel, because he didn't leave me any room for drawing. <laughs> there were so many words. I was like, you know, when you're doing, it's not like a book where you can say, and then she did this and blah, 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 and you have the image in your head. No, it all has to fit like when he was in the bathtub. There's all these words and poor Dennis is in the bathtub, you know? Right. <laughs> but uh, I, it, yeah, it went pretty quick from letters to sketches to me inking and winging it pretty much. Yeah, mm -hmm. so. yeah the, 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 the general wisdom is, is maximum 35 words per panel. 
Uh, is? For, yes, yes. Uh, I didn't know there was wisdoms yeah, and, about this. And sometimes, if it's a very small panel, 35 words is too much. Um, yeah. And so, and there were a couple of where Mia did some beautiful sort of mini panel, mini mini panels of the sort Alan Moore loves to do on those pages with, you know, a dozen right, panels. Right. Um, and I was I was very happy to see the words go. Uh, there was no problem with that at all. Whenever she said, get rid of some words. And don't forget the penguins. Come oh. on, the penguins were totally cool. Yeah, the pe penguins, yes. They're, that, they're that was sort of my idea. It's, it's well, you could tell the story about the, the, the show on TV. Um, well, I'll let them, that they okay. gotta, I gotta leave something for All people right. to discover. But the last page, after the TV penguins, that was me. I just thought, well, put them naked in the snow. They're, they're warm enough. It's yeah, that okay. goes along with the flying bicycle and the Bomarzo <laughs> heads in Central Park and yeah. all the other wonderful, uh, Mia's wonderful um, sort of imaginative metaphorical extensions of what is going on, all of which I think work mm. wonderfully, you know, wonderfully. Um, it makes, I, I, the only thing, you know, my, the thing is, that, uh, by fir my first thought was to say something like, well, I wish my life was actually that exciting. Uh, but I did. Um, it you is. Know, it's all it, true. It, it is. You know. I didn't exaggerate. Well, all right, wings on a bicycle. But other yeah, than yeah. that. But th know. yeah, things of, things of that sort. But that's, but that's kind of how it felt, certainly. And it does, it does follow the, you know, it, it's a wonderful expression of what the, the, the feelings of behind the incidents were. So I well, think... Well, you did say the, the part about when you, you know, had the accident and the truck hit you and yeah. you flew through the air, which is the most comic booky of them because yeah. it was like a schematic thing that you had to describe to me. You went this way, your glasses went that way, and the umbrella went the other way. Right. So that one, that one came out good, I thought. But yeah. I, I that one I labored over to get the rain coming down from above and all the... And and, <laughs> and and I think succeeded. Uh, you can tell that I am a um, a staunch Mia Wolf fan, uh, and I am. I you know I and have been for many many years. <laughs> Questions, guys? Um, yes, Kara. I actually called Chip up, I remember this, and I said, are we going to put sex in? I said, I think we should, what do you think? And you said? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, you know, you have to remember, I, I'm, I'm somebody, I'm a gay man who came through the AIDS epidemic. The notion that, ex, you know, that being genteel about intimacy and certain things we don't sh show, that kills people that kills people and I just did not want to be complicit in murder because I think that's what it does. Uh, this is something I have said to so many classes in so many universities and it's something I feel very very strongly about uh, that um, uh, I do not think that in any way, in shape or form, saying that I am like every other person in the world. I have a sex life. It consists of A, B, C, D specifically, because everybody's sex life consists of specific things. I do not think it diminishes my dignity. I do not think it diminishes my humanity. I do not think in any way it should, it should be um, um, wrong to do that. And I think the people who do think it's wrong are wrong, are very, very wrong. And, and they, as I said, and they're, they, they are in the, when, it, when, they, when they do it to children and, and adolescents and what have you, they are killing them. Because that's what that, the, the, the ignorance that goes along with it, that it fosters, uh, the secrecy that it fosters, uh, the lies that it fosters, so that, 
you know, various people feel that they can say anything about sex at all, which is what happens, uh, is a very bad and evil thing. And I think, it, I, I, I feel myself violently opposed to it. This is why I write the books I do. It's why I write, thank you, well, you know, uh, that's why I write the books I do. It's why I, I do the kinds of things I do. Anyway, uh, I, mean, I didn't mean to bring things quite so, quite so serious, but it, I think it is a serious thing, and uh, you know, so that's that's why, you know, that's why it's uh, that's why I do it, and I think that's I think that's why any thinking person does it today. You know, um, any other questions, John? Yes, and Janet, you were going to. How did Ellen Moore come to write the introduction? The introduction? Which one of us asked him? Was it you or me? I think I think maybe I wrote the first letter. No. Did you did you or, write him? Or did, I don't I don't really. Or did Robert ask him, or was it us? I think Robert. I think Robert. I was, wouldn't be surprised. I think if it Robert, was Robert was the first. Robert Morales was the first person who asked him, and I know I I, I remember sending him an effusive thank you letter. I remember uh, when I got it because I was still living upstate. Yeah. And I was waiting for this introduction, and I'm a huge fan of Alan Moore, and has been been for years, and this beautiful introduction came in the mail and I remember running down the street with it, like going like this. I don't even know where I was going, but I remember running. And I also remember I ran into the local comic book, this is upstate New Paul's, and I ran into the local comic book store, which didn't have much of bread and wine kind of things there. And I said, look, Alan Moore, he wrote an introduction for our book. I was like, cuckoo, yeah. I, I don't remember. Yeah, I, rem I remember I, I, was, I was teaching a, um, a uh, seminar at the, Atlantic, um, at the Atlantic Center for the Arts down in uh, Florida. And when, I, when the, someone forwarded the introduction, was it you, possibly? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe, yeah. Yeah, I, to me. And I, I remember just walking around with my head bouncing off the ceiling uh, for the next three or four days when I got this, this incredibly generous and, and, and kind. And, I can't and, believe we forgot who yeah. asked him. But yeah. one of us asked him, <laughs> I, and he said yes. Yes, and he's, Alan's very generous that yes, way. Yes, he is, yeah. yeah. He's, he's a wonderful guy. If he guy. likes something, he really goes to bat yeah. for you. Mm -hmm. so. Yeah, I, I sent him a very, I, I sent him a, 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 a thank you letter that was almost as long as his introduction. <laughs> <laughs> well, he likes you too, so well, uh, you know. <laughs> well, it's, it's mutual. It's mutual. That's another mutual, um, 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 mutual admiration society going along there. Um, anything else that anybody else would like to ask about anything? Either what's? Um, oh yes, was that a yeah. hand? Yes. Yes, the hill. Yeah, Brotundin. Yes. Well, um, it was a poem that I would, that uh, during the time that Dennis and I were getting together, getting together, um, I was reading a lot, and I was also reading, um, um, I was also sort of working, struggling my way through the Paul de Man, uh essay on bread and wine, um, the Hodelin elegy there, uh, and um, so it just seemed a good. Um, background piece to sort of, you know, because it was always sort of bits and pieces of it were always going through my mind. And um, the, um, the, the, in, in the old Penguin Hölderlin um, um, anthology, um, um, they did, they had the German on the page, and then they had prose translations underneath. Uh, and so I used um, the prose translations broken up into into lines um, and sometimes I, I sometimes I confess I would rewrite the prose translations a little bit you didn't tell me uh, you did that <laughs> never asked <laughs> no seriously. no I did uh, just to make them to, just to make them closer to my sense of what the German meant not that I speak any German but I wasn't going to let that stop me <laughs> All right, so let's put it this way. The, old, the only German I speak is basically um, um, what I've learned reading Wagner libretti, you know, which is, you know, really weird. You know. Um, so, um, and it's, and, and, and the, um, um, and it's, a, it, the, the Hölderlin poem is sort of a displaced um, love poem 
in a way. I mean, it's not it's not a direct love poem. It's a, it's a, but it's about one of the one of its topics is where love sits in the overall universe of life. You know, the market and the the the, the market and the boats of going into Carthage and the this and the that and all the various kinds of things that fill up the world. Um, so it's it's very it's a very um, encompassing poem that is a picture of an entire classical world that is very clearly I think intended as a, as a set of metaphors for the modern world uh, and and to sort of um, well, I mean, we go on forever about Holderlin. Um, he's. But a friend of mine is kind of like that. I mean, there's Pardon all me? the details. And, yeah, yeah. You I'm know, like when Dennis is like repacking, and there's all those, you know, and all, and the and the the Balanchine ballet, and there's there's all these. You know, you're big on details, so all all of those details, and then so the sort of like the current of the two of you runs in between that. So in that sense. They're right. very much alike. Yeah. No? Well, one of the things I always tell my writing students, and I try to do it myself, and I just came back from a, a string of workshops um, all through July, um, the, is that, um, that a story not only has to be about the incidents of the story, it also has to be about the world in which the story takes place uh, for it to be, you know, feel really rich and satisfying. And I think the Holderlin was a way of, of, of pointing um, the, the reader to the world in which this was taking place, as do, do Mia's incredibly fine and rich and suggestive drawings, you know, that are very, I mean, that, this isn't, uh, as as a as a visual object, that's the Upper West Side, you know, and it's really the, it, in that in that sense that's the world in which the the it, it took place with you know with little side trips to Amherst, Massachusetts, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Do you remember Do you remember the part where you're waiting for Dennis and then? And I stick in the thing in Central Park, the, yes. the statue. Was that your idea? No, that was yours. That was my idea. Yeah, okay, uh, see, I don't even know. It's all blurred no, together. That was definitely yours, and I thought, wow, that's great, because there are statues in Central Park, and I yeah. can imagine. Well, I, I love it that we were both doing the same thing, putting yes, in right, all these right, New yeah. York landmarks mm -hmm. and, you know, yeah. right. allowing the story to run between them. Right. Mm -hmm. And I think, I, think, I think that's probably... Um, part of both your aesthetic and mine, which is one of the reasons why I like your artwork so much. Because all I All those wacko details, right? Yeah, well, yeah, and all those <laughs> wacko, de wacko details that hang together so much. They don't fly apart. They hang together and make, and give me a very wonderful sense of the world in which the picture is. You know, the picture sits. That's, that's why I like them, as I said. Yeah. I mean, you really are one of my favorite artists. There's Thank nothing you. I can do about it. <laughs> uh, anything else that um, anyone else would like to? Uh, uh, yes, yes, the friend, my friend back there in the. Uh, yes, you. I yeah. The, I remember a scene where you're talking to John, and you're kind of asking him whether you're sort of, you're sort of unsure whether you should sort of continue seeing Dennis sort of trepidation. Yes. He seems like supportive of it. Yeah. I'm sort of curious whether um, that was sort of around the board, whether like, you know, everyone you knew was sort of supportive, or whether there was some pushback, because in the book it seems like, you know, there's almost no problem there. There, there really wasn't. I mean, honestly and truly, there wasn't. I mean, John, who, again, is somebody I've known and has known me for, you know, since I was, I think I met him when he was 26 and I was then 47. Um, so, you know, I'd known him for 20 years. Um, and, um, um, you know, I, I said, you know, look, would you just go talk to him and what do you think? And he went and had coffee with Dennis and, you know, and came back and said, yeah, he'd be perfect for you. <laughs> you know, and I said, um, and yeah, and Dennis is, was a very, Dennis struck people as a very unusual person. For one thing, he was not and has never been even vaguely into drugs. Um, he just wasn't. I mean, you know, he was a street person, but, you know, um, the man was scrupulously honest and you know, and still is. I mean, you, you know, the, he, there are, you know, um, I think he's probably more honest than I am. I mean, you know, I mean, I can see myself, you know, if somebody leaves a, you know, a, 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 
a $20 bill in the middle of the sidewalk, I will probably pick it up. Dennis will pick it up and then spend at least an hour trying to find out who it belongs to. You know, which is, which is different from me. <laughs> I will simply say me. I mean, I, you know, I would pick it up and say, it's New York, it's on the street, I'll never find who it belongs to, I'm going home. <laughs> you know, Dennis, no, Dennis was, would sit there and, you know, and say, hey, anybody drop a $20 bill? Hey, you know. And uh, I, I'm, I'm very, I was very impressed with this, you know. And I still am, and he's still, you know, just he's just, uh, he's a good role model, <laughs> to be perfectly, to be perfectly frank. I'm very lucky; I have some very good role models around, you know, um, and I, I, I value them highly. My daughter is a role model for me. Kids are like that. Yeah, they are. Yeah. Um, anything else? Yes. Oh, yes. This might be a slightly trite question, but go I'm right ahead. Curious. Has your daughter read? I don't think she's read. I I says I don't know. I really don't. I haven't asked her. Um, um, she's read my autobiography. I know that, and that is, which also is about her mom. Uh, and she has never said anything about it. Um, one of her, high, she read it in high school too, and one of her high school friends said something to me about it, like, wow! <laughs> um, you know, but that was about it. You know, and um, you know, and I waited for him, uh, uh, an elucidation of his wow, uh, she, her boyfriend at the time, but um, I never got it. <laughs> yeah. uh, yes? Have you or Dennis uh, done work with people who are trying to transition from homelessness to more stable uh, living situations? No, no, we haven't. Um, I've thought about it actually. But you've um, been very helpful to homeless people in a non formal way. Other than Dennis, yeah, I'm, I'm, yeah. There was all those guys in the neighborhood. You would always, we, when we would, be, you'd walk me to the subway and you say, "Oh no, no, wait, I have to give so and so some money." Oh yeah, yeah, I you know. know. I, yeah, I, not you know, in a formal. Which way. is, which I think is a, a kind of, I think that's almost a neighborhood thing in the Upper West Side. You adopt three to five homeless people, you know, and every time you see them, they're the ones who get the, you know. I think get, Chip, you might be a little unusual in that. I don't know. I, I don't know. I'm not the only so? one, one I know who does okay. that. Yeah. Um, but uh, um, as I said, I've thought about it. I've never, uh, partially because I work in two cities um, and, um, you know, and, and time and, you know, there are just not enough hours in the day. You know. I did go once to see about something like that, actually, uh, uh, years ago, and it, and it simply was going to take up, you know, I had to go through a training program, et cetera, et cetera, in order to do it, and I thought, I just don't, ha I don't have the time to do this, so I will just have to go out and go along, you know, with my adoptive, you know, program. How are we doing, time-wise? <laughs> Okay, um, maybe one more question, or do you want to yeah, do let's, let's do one more question if anyone has one. Yeah. Uh, the Ignazio Salone novel? No, no, no. It, it basically had to do with the, the Hildelin, and I wouldn't be surprised if the Salone novel had something to do with that. <laughs> Uh, so they may share a similar sauce, source. That poem is pretty famous in Europe. Yeah. Okay, well, I'd like to thank everyone again for coming out. Uh, I'd like you to let you know that uh, Ms. Wolf and Mr. Delaney will be autographing copies of their books over here. And I'd like to thank them once again for coming tonight. <laughs> <laughs>